welcome flip clock fans you're looking at a clock that was sent in to flip clock fan studio so we can make a tutorial it's missing the glass but that's what it would look like with the glass but the glass was not shipped with it for safety it's the copal model 702 it appeared in advertising about 1973 as the copal digital deluxe alarm clock it is a high-end flip clock and it's nice shout out to georgie from flipclockfans.com who sent this clock in so we could use it as a tutorial we're going to look at how to replace the light and how to get a motor started that's not working. You see here this is not spinning, the motor's not working. So I'll have to remove some screws. I'm not going to go into that so much. It's not so much a, uh, about the 702 as it is about how to replace these lights, these bulbs. I often talk about it, but I don't show the process. On this 702, you want to unloosen this switch. It gets, out, it, gets it out a little bit easier. You got to be careful sliding this out. It's very tight. I would imagine it was really a problem to assemble these things. You've got to be careful. That right there wants to catch on. It's an extruded aluminum case, all one piece and anodized. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a bulb that's a little blackened. You got to first just loosen that up, comes right out. Other than that, everything looks fine. You can see it's got the original wire nuts. And I'm looking at that, and sometimes when I'm working on these, I want to figure, do I want to replace the whole light assembly or just the bulb? And you see here, the motor, it's supposed to spin freely. They spin counterclockwise, typically. I've removed the can here so I can get access to it. Now, I've already put some oil in there off camera. And I'm going to do that a couple more times to get a proper amount of oil down in there. So what you do is you get the hole right above the arbor or right where it spins. And you're dropping the oil down the back side. You don't need any on the outside. I'm doing a little bit of a pulse. you got to be careful doing that. You might even want to skip this. But it helps get the oil in there. You don't want to pull the gear on the other side off. That would be bad. Once you get that oil down in there, you spin it. You also want to run the motor. Let it work that oil down in there. Maybe let it run overnight and then put another drop in the morning. Today we're using Speedex, the Go Faster Bearing and Chain Treatment. And it's got stuff in it that helps break down gunk, and it lubricates well. It's been doing good work for us. We used to use alcohol to break that loose and sometimes WD-40, but we've moved away from that. We do not recommend that anymore. So you'll see when I power this on, the light will come on, and we want to see that motor come on right away, and it pretty much does, so it's working well. Yeah, I should be able to stop it, and if I release it, it should start right back up. It's a little lag there. So as the oil works itself down in there, that'll get better. Now turning our attention to this bulb, we want to look at that and say, well, the components are in good shape. We seem to have enough wire to work with. Sometimes I'll, I'll rebuild a whole component. But this time I'm going to show you how to replace just the bulb. Instead of undoing all these nuts, we're going to try to preserve everything like it was in the original. They use a, a brown adhesive, and I'm pretty sure I know what that is. You're going to have to break this loose with something like this pick. What I use is a silicone adhesive called Whirlpool 297368. It is for putting felt on dryers. It is waterproof and it's high temperature, so it's perfect for that. What it's going to do is just hold that component together. You do not have to overdo that. And I'm pretty sure they've used something like that. You break it loose. It's like rubber cement. But again, it's high temperature. You're not going to have to worry about something flaming up on you. So you slide the tubes down. And you see here that the tubes go far enough away from the bulb to where it's not going to get in my way, so I'll be able to replace just this bulb. Now you'll see the resistor there. The bulb you replace it with has to have a resistor. The bulbs that I typically use are going to be called C2A, and I use the company Memotronics.com. They include the resistors that you need with the bulb. You don't want to use the same resistor. They have aged. They're not going to function as well. So you want to replace the bulb and the resistor. I'm going to show you how to do that. We want to get the length about the same as this setup so that we, we don't have to cut wires or anything. We're just going to replace it. Now, I've already warmed up those connections and pulled 
pulled this out. So I had to warm that up with my soldering iron, and it just pulled out. They had wrapped the wire around the leads and then soldered it. It would be funny if I could heat that up and slide that back in there. Theoretically, I could, but it actually wouldn't make a good connection. Usually, you want to strip the wire and then tin the leads like these are already are tinned. Tinned means covered with solder. So we're just going to lie those side by side and solder them together, and it's actually going to work great. Now I'm measuring this up to get the same length. Now you see the bulb is a little bit shorter on the C2A. That's not a big deal. The extra length on the other is just the size of the nipple. And that can be accommodated for. It's not a problem at all. The light output is very good on these C2As. That's where the one wire is going to attach that doesn't have the resistor on it. Here's how we do this. What I'm doing is I'm heating the leads. Now, right here, what I'm doing is tinning the soldering tip. You do that, it helps transfer heat better. It helps protect your soldering iron's tip, but it'll transfer heat better too. I'm warming up the leads. Now, some people will say you're going to melt the solder on the hot leads. What you've got to get away from is thinking that you're dripping melting solder onto wires. That's a horrible job. You can usually tell when someone's done that because it gets real clumpy. Now you let this cool down by itself. Don't blow on it. It'll just cool naturally. And that's it. So that side's done. And we'll check this against the old one to make sure the link's the same. We'll just trim, we'll probably trim back the resistor side just a little bit, about a centimeter. It doesn't matter what side the resistor is on, it doesn't matter the position, the distance away from the bulb, anything like that. There is no positive or negative on these leads, it's alternating current. Now when you get the wires connected up here, it's, since it's still attached to the clock, you have to make sure you move this away from the clock. Don't get in a hurry, you drip that solder down on your tiles and you're going to regret that. So you get them lined up, you get your same thing, you're going to get the wires warm. Now this is good quality wire because lesser quality wire, the, the insulation will draw back with this heat. This is over-engineered, this is military spec wire in here. It's taking the heat. It's hard to show this on video without getting in the way, and I apologize. See this one's taking it really well. You see the smoking there. That's actually from rosin that's inside the solder. This is a uh, rosin core solder. You see if I touch the center there. Rosin is just stuff that helps the metal adhere to each other. And your basic soldering kits are going to have some of that. Okay, so the second one is just the same. We're going to get it heated up really well. And in this case, I cheat a little bit. Just touch the soldering iron a little bit just to get it started and then it just goes right along. And you can tell you've got it heated up nicely because it, it flows really nicely like that. It takes a little practice. I'm no expert, but I get the job done. And again, you're going to let this cool. You're not going to blow on it. We're going to separate these leads because we're going to power this on. And remember, be careful. This is household current and it can kill you. Now when that powers on, you should see this motor kick on right away or pretty soon after to make sure we're lubricated well. And it does pretty much. Again, it's going to run for a while with some lubricant on it. we got a really good light here. It's going to be really good output. And here we are. We've got the setup all together. Now, because the bulb is a little bit shorter, you push this tab in. The holder was designed so that you can push this in and get the position that you want before you crimp down this other side here. So everything seems to be in good position. Again, we're going to power on. We're going to test and probably put one more drop of oil on there. Let it run overnight. Got a good position here. About right in the center. Just whatever works for you. That's going to look good. So there it is. Copal Model 702. 
got a working motor now, working light, and I hope this little tutorial helps someone. Thanks for taking the time.